Hi, Asher. It's so good to see you. Hi, David. Nice to see you too. And uh, we are uh, coming together. We wanted to pair our hearts together with the whole global family about one of the most important times that Jesus fulfilled, which we call Pentecost or Shavuot. And uh, I, we were talking, Asher and I, and we felt that it's very important this year, 2022, that the global family will understand that this is not just another Shavuot. There is a landmark that the Lord is putting in our hearts. And we were talking, so I asked Asher, Asher, could you give us a biblical background on Pentecost? And uh, so the people can understand this is not just a Jewish feast. This is actually God's ordained time for the end of days too. So Asher, would you please uh, give us a little bit of a background on that? Well, that was a great pitch, David. Thanks. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> listen, of course, Shavuot started as a uh, an agricultural feast of Israel coming in, bringing in their first harvest in. But what was amazing, by the time we get to the New Covenant, uh, this is one of the greatest events of history. I think perhaps outside of the death and resurrection of Yeshua, perhaps the greatest, that the Holy Spirit was poured out on the original community of Yeshua's disciples, who were basically all Galilean Israeli Jews at that point. And, uh, and it became this moment where they were the first harvest spiritually to go along with the agricultural harvest. And, uh, and they became this community of faith. But as I've studied that and going over and over again for really decades, 40 years now, I'm touched with the fact that not only was this such an amazing historic event, but it has not just what happened in Jerusalem, but it has global implications. It's not a one-time event that happened in one location, but it has global implications. And also it has implications about the end times. So I just want to explain those two little aspects real quick, and then we can we can pray and we can you can lead our dear friends and partners to be praying together with us for this Pentecost. Well, on that day, it said that uh, the Holy Spirit was poured out and they were all together in one place at one time. If you're going to be in one place, you got to have one time. So you have togetherness, unity, geography, time. If you're going to have a, a united event, you have to pull that off. So they were there all together, Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and the Holy Spirit was poured out. Two things that are interesting about that I mentioned globally it was poured out on 120 people that were all Galilean, Israeli, Sabra Jews. But surrounding them immediately was a group of 3,000 people that came from every nation of the world, at least in this case, 27 or so as I counted it. But they were, they were representing people from all over the world. In other words, at that first event, 15 minutes later, there was this huge group of people that they went back. For, they had come up to Jerusalem to see the feast. And they went back to their homes. In other words, there was a, a global extension of that event almost immediately. The 120, the 3,000, and then to all the nations of the world. It was including Arabs. It was including uh, Jewish converts, different nations from around the world. So all the nations were already involved in that first event in Jerusalem. So it started in Jerusalem, went to around the world. So we see it had global implications. And of course, Yeshua said to preach the gospel all over the world. But here's what's amazing. When Peter got up, Shimon Kepha, as we say in Hebrew, and he got up to explain it, what happened, he quoted the book of Joel. And he said something, it's astonishing. He said, this is that. This is that which was said by the prophet Joel. And here's what he said. I'll say it in Hebrew because he was quoting a Hebrew uh, prophecy. He said, it will happen in the end days. It's so, it will happen in the end days, Peter said, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Now I'm looking and saying, did that happen 2,000 years ago? Yes, to a certain degree, because all those people were there. Has it happened over these past 2,000 years? Yes, because people have been being filled with the Holy Spirit all around the world all these times. But it seems to be more than that. He seems to be talking about an event that's going to happen right as we're coming close 
to the second coming of Yeshua, not not necessarily an event, but a movement, a an outpouring, because he says, Ishpoch, I will pour out. He said, he, he said there's, he's talking about in the end days, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And so what we realize is that that we have a pattern in Acts chapter 2 that began to multiply and it's spreading around the world. But as we can understand it, it's coming to a culmination of fullness, which could be exponentially greater. I mean, listen, in the end times, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And the only thing I, other thing I wanted to say was if we're going to be at all in unity, you have to pick some kind of date. I mean, you could pick any date you wanted to, but it's obviously a good date to pick would be the same date that they had, which would be Shavuot, Pentecost. And I think that Paul saw the same thing that we're just talking about here, because it says in Acts 20, verse 16, that he rushed to get back to Jerusalem for the feast of, of Shavuot. Now, why was he rushing to get back there? Because he wanted to wave the barley harvest? Maybe because he wanted to remember what happened uh, at that Pentecost meeting that he himself wasn't there? Maybe, but I think more than that, I think he saw these prophecies and he got back there to be praying on this day for this global outpouring. He didn't, it might have been that year, it might have been another 10 years, it might have been another thousand years. He didn't know and we don't know when it is, but we are continuing the footsteps of Peter on that first day, Paul on his continuing prayer, and we're praying to believe for a, 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 an outpouring on the global family of faith, and we're choosing the same date that they did to, to pray together. So I think, David, what you and I wanted to do was just to encourage all of our friends and spiritual family and the whole global family, let's be praying on this date, like Peter and Paul and all the early community of faith, let's be praying that this date represents the hope that in the end times, as it says, Acts 2, 17, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh in the end times and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Hallelujah. It's so good, Asher, to hear what you shared. It was it was very, very uh, beautiful. And it's a reminder of us. And uh, I will just use again your verse that you used, Acts 2, verse 1. And uh, it says, we were together, together, or together in one place, or together in one spirit, which means there are two things. One is the physical and one is the spiritual. And uh, I feel that uh, what you shared about in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I feel that there is an acceleration now. It's, mm -hmm. it's, there is no one that can ignore the fact that we are living in a time that very, very, uh, very, uh, uh, important in preparation of the bride for the bridegroom actually prophetically we feel that we are there is an acceleration of that and the shaking of the uh, world now is to bring the unshakable and how the unshakable kingdom come forth in us is by a new outpouring of the holy spirit of fire of uh, a boldness uh, and i believe we are the lord has been preparing us and in the last two years, we have been aligning ourselves as a global family, as Gentiles, with God's timetable. And we did the Pentecost uh, uh, twice now. And this year, we're going to do it again, but not physically, together in one uh, on a Zoom call. We are going to encourage every family, if you, uh, uh, if you are living in a remote area or in, in your church or in your ministry or in your city, gather together with people of like heart and pray that the fulfillment, and the, actually Peter said, when they told him, what is that? He said, that is off what Joel prophesied. It's not the, full, the fullness of what Joel prophesied. It's the beginning. And uh, we're going to see an increasing measure in these days. This year, there is another new level. Next year, there is another new level. And in all of it, from glory to glory to glory. And I want to encourage our global family to uh, physically come together, not just on Zoom, but physically come together. We are not going to do as a global family one on Zoom uh, this year, but the, we wanted uh, uh, on that day, gather with the family, begin to pray, take communion together and say, Lord, we offer ourselves, we pray 
for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This is not just an encouragement. Actually, we, are, we feel the weight of the Holy Spirit on our hearts to, to uh, tell everyone, this is the time of fulfillment of prophecies and promises. So we want to say to you that we will miss you physically. I will be actually in Korea at this time, and I will be meeting with the Korean family during Pentecost. But please uh, don't let that day pass. It's uh, June 4 and 5. Gather together with your own family, your wife, your children, or your church, or your ministry, or whatever capacity, and come in one heart, one spirit, in unity, and say, Lord, we want another measure. We want another release of your spirit in those days. You know, David, I was just wanted to encourage all, anyone who's watching or listening, and it says there in Acts 2, verse 5, that there was God-fearing Jews and converts from every nation of the world. So wherever you are, you're in that verse. You're in chapter two. You're in Acts chapter two in the past. We're in Acts chapter two in the present as we continue on. But we're also together in Acts chapter two for our future hope. Past, present, and future, we're stepping into that incredible prophetic uh, uh, fulfillment time. Whoa, it's really going to be exciting. So we're we're all together in one heart and one place at this. Amen. Amen. And it's uh, I'm so blessed, Asher, uh, to have a... a and a, a, a Jew and an Egyptian uh, sharing this together on this uh, few minutes together with you. We are a token of what the Lord is about to do, multiply Man. all over the world. Love you very much and uh, looking forward to bye seeing bye, you. Bye, everybody. Bye.